everyone and welcome to this People in Places special. I'm Ken Watling. This half hour, we're taking a look back at some of my favorite People in Places stops in 2019. And I've been on the road a lot, bringing you unique stories from a dozen different counties across Eastern North Carolina. There are so many great stories to tell across the East, like the one of a 73 year old race car driver in Craven County. Up until I was 68, I was never on a racetrack. And the next thing you know, five years later, uh, this is what I do. History is all around us. History highlighted inside several museums we traveled to this year. We have the largest portrait display in the United States, eight by 10 military portraits. We're pushing right at 1,200. Understanding history is what gets us to healing. Um, understanding Underground Railroad history helps generations to understand maybe things that they did not understand in the past. And we featured places looking to the future, including a new restaurant hoping to help revitalize a small town. I just think so many people have been down on Plymouth for so long, it was time for someone to be a little bit up on Plymouth. Plus, there are homegrown businesses soaring to new heights. The seventh largest uh, uh, aircraft charter company in the country based right here in eastern North Carolina at the Global Transport. So I, I think people will be really surprised to know that there's one that big happening right here. Right now, let's head to Craven County. A lot has changed over the years, including how we get our goods and services. But there's one place that's bucking the trend. In fact, a trip here and you may think you've gone back in time. Along Highway 55 in Craven County, oh, about halfway between New Bern and Kinston, sits a tiny place making a big impact. There's not many of these stores around anymore. No, there's nothing quite like Buzzard's Corner. I'm 40 years old and I've been coming here ever since I was a little boy. They got the coldest drinks. One fella that comes in and says, hey, it's a little Walmart. But it's not just the convenience of this store that makes it stand out. I love it. I just love it being an old country store. The store is over 100 years old, so I just try to keep up the old tradition. That tradition goes all the way to the gas pump. When you pull up, the folks at Buzzard's Corner come out and pump your gas. Sandy Wayne is one of the folks pumping gas these days, just like others did for her when she moved to this area some 30 years ago. The fellow that run it at that time would pump your gas, so I enjoyed just being able to pull up, especially with a small child, and let them pump your gas, and you kind of go on and you ain't got to worry about trying to run into the store, leave your child outside, whatever. Okay. But it's inside where this community often comes together. If you come out at six o'clock in the morning, we have a whole lot of the community, older people that come in and sit around and drink coffee and just enjoy it. One of those people is R.D. McCoy, who says he can't exactly remember when he started coming here. Years and years. It's, a, it's a, my favorite place to go. Uh, I'm here every morning at 6, and uh, most of the time I'm here at 12 eating lunch. It's the place where all of us come here in the community. Uh, we talk about the weather and farming. Um, we're a farming community and um, just a close-knit community, and uh, this store means a lot to us. I enjoy it. I enjoy working with people, and I enjoy just seeing customers that get ha to be happy. And it's hard not to be happy when you walk inside Buzzard's Corner, a Craven County landmark for more than 100 years and county. How special is it that it's still here after a century? Oh, well, uh, it's a lifesaver to us, and uh, I hope it'll continue for many years to come. There are also other things you can get at Buzzard's Corner that you probably can in other places, like their big jars of pig's feet and pickled eggs sitting right up on the front counter. Stay close, we are just getting started. Our People in Places Best of 2019 special continues after the break. Ahead, we're digging the past at one of the most popular museums in Eastern North Carolina. Plus, raise a glass as I visit a spot helping to revitalize downtown Tarboro. Welcome back to our best of 2019 People in Places special. I visited Beaufort County four times this year and we're sharing two of those stories with you tonight. Right now, a closer look at one spot people really dig as it's become a popular attraction over the past 40 years. 
If you've ever been to Aurora, it's likely you've spent time here. People love, love this museum. The Aurora Fossil Museum. It's kind of like a rite of passage for a lot of the local regional people. Um, it's, it's a unique uh, museum. But why fossils? According to the Smithsonian, Eastern North Carolina is one of the richest fossil locations in the world. The fossils were discovered as a byproduct of digging and mining for phosphate. Um, there's a rich phosphate layer under our feet, uh, so the neighboring phosphate mine would unearth these fossils. And some of the leftover dirt from the mine comes here. I think we are the only museum in the United States that has a museum directly associated with a fossil hunting area. So our visitors can come in, learn about the past, learn about the rich fossil history of the area, and then dig, interact with, with science and dig for fossils that they get to keep and take home. Sometimes those take-home fossils are quite rare. Megalodon too. How long did it take you to find it? Ooh, about an hour. Had to dig pretty deep. Shane Sykes and his family are here from Jones County. Oh, we love it. We love it. Family comes here quite often and enjoy our sales. Yes, sir. And every time you come, do you find something kind of like this? Something kind of like this. This is rare. I mean, you'll find teeth all the time, mostly small, but this is what makes it worth it. Worth it indeed. Unfortunately, time and Mother Nature have taken its toll on the museum. Hurricane Florence was kind of like the trigger that started more damage. And earlier this year, they called on the public to dig in and help keep this piece of ENC history alive. A fundraising campaign brought in more than $20,000 to go towards repairs to the roof, which happened in May. Just one way the museum's fans are making sure the facility's future is rock solid. I think it's a, a place that Aurora can really grow from as a museum grows. Hopefully the town can grow and it can draw more people to Aurora. And if you'd like to donate and help the museum in the future, it is easy. There's a link in this story on our website, WNCT.com. Up next, the craft beer business is booming in the east. I'll raise a glass to a few spots with some unique stories behind them. And we stop at the birthplace of one of the most iconic brands in the world. That's next on the Best of 2019 People and Places Special. Welcome back to the Best of 2019 People and Places Special. The craft beer business is burgeoning in eastern North Carolina. And this year, I stopped at three different breweries in the east, all with really unique stories behind them. In the heart of downtown Winterville, there's a small self-made success story. This is Pitt County's newest craft brewery, Local Oak Brewing Company. The name comes from the huge oak tree that sits just outside the brewery in a sprawling courtyard. Benjamin Self owns and runs the place along with his wife, Amy. And we actually went on our first date in a brewery, so it was pretty fun. In Rocky Mount, along the banks of the Tar River sits what was North Carolina's second cotton mill built in 1818. But a Raleigh company came up with a live, work, play concept, and the new Rocky Mount Mills was born a few years ago. Today, there are more than half a dozen local craft breweries on site, including one owned by the first African-American woman to ever open a brewery in America. Come here, experience the Rocky Mount Mill. All of what it has to offer, whether you're here at, at Rocky Mount Brewery, Spaceway, Harlem Brew South, or the other breweries that we have here, it's really an amazing opportunity to look at an, a history that started in 1818 and see the transformation and how it led to all of us working together. Another brewery at Rocky Mount Mills is TBC West, the TBC standing for Tarboro Brewing Company. Over the summer, I stopped by TBC's original location in Edgecombe County, where they're not only brewing up beer to sell across the state, they're also helping to revitalize downtown Tarboro. It's been incredible <laughs> watching how many people come from all over the place. And what they're coming for is craft beer, brewed inside this old car dealership in downtown Tarboro. It's a great place. I mean, it's helping revitalize downtown. This is a very family-friendly spot. The spot is Tarboro Brewing Company. The name is simple, but it means a lot to owner Inez Ribastello. I love Tarboro so much. I'm kind of obnoxious about Tarboro. <laughs> 
How does one get in the beer business in Tarboro, North Carolina? <laughs> well, my husband and I are both wine people, but you're not going to grow grapes in Tarboro. <laughs> and Inez and her husband bought the building back in 2008, not knowing what it would become. But the focus turned to beer after seeing the big business breweries were doing in other towns in eastern North Carolina. And after securing investors, fundraising, and receiving grant money, the brewery opened in early 2016. First a brewing and canning operation to sell their beer statewide, then a few months later came the tap room. And people will travel for beer. Yep. That's been really great. And Greenville is so good to us, um, Roanoke Rapids. But it's those from Tarboro who make this place what it is. People like Michael Harris and his family. You know, it's one of the things a lot of people don't think about you know, having a family with, you know, going out and, you know, having a beer. Uh, but they've really been able to pull it together and uh, really make a family atmosphere. And, you know, it's a, a safe place. You feel, you know, ha you know, happy that the kids can come and um, play games and have fun. Um, but, yeah, you can still have some adult time. We were not planning to do a tap room. Right. But in the six years that it took us to get open, the landscape had changed very much and the amount of breweries in North Carolina alone had tripled. The beer is really good, which always helps, but uh, you know, I just look, you know, it's really nice getting together with, with uh, old friends and catching up. We're flattered and we're honored and we're humbled yeah. by people visiting. And TBC keeps it local when it comes to the names of their beers like Town Common Ale and Downtown Abbey. And there's one called Nana's Roof, named in honor of Inez's grandmother, who helped pay the down payment to fix the roof of the brewery. Right now to a different kind of drink. Did you know one of the world's most iconic drinks got its start in downtown Newburgh? The birthplace of Pepsi Cola sits at the corner of Pollock and Middle Streets. It's inside where Caleb Bradham created the now iconic product way back in 1898. Today, visitors can stop by and learn more about Pepsi's Eastern North Carolina roots. And that we can open our doors in a very simple way to let people step back in time and experience um, things as Caleb Bradham experienced, looking out the same window and seeing the town just walk by. So it's a great feeling. The birthplace of Pepsi Cola is open seven days a week, 10 until six Monday through Saturday and noon until four on Sundays. Ahead, it's game on outside one restaurant in the east will meet the players behind the tradition and a stop in Bertie County to learn more about one specific, very uncommon dish that seems to be a favorite of just about everyone there. Welcome back to WNCT's Best of 2019 People and Places Special. Right now it's time to talk food and a story that really had people talking earlier this year. The recipe for this sweet and savory treat has been passed down for generations. It's one specific, very uncommon dish that seems to be a favorite for folks in one particular county. No matter where you go in Bertie County, there's a certain food that just about everyone here knows and loves. Oh gosh, it's one of my favorites. I'm getting it today. I have My grandmother made it all the time, and this is the only place I've had it good since she left this earth. From Windsor to Allander and every point in between, it's a dish they call their own. It, it is something I think we kind of really started here. I don't know that it's necessarily a Bertie County thing, but I've known about it since I was a small child, and that was uh, 69 years ago, I guess, when I was a small child. I believe if you lived in Bertie County, was raised in Bertie County, you know what tomato pudding is. Yes, you heard her right. Tomato pudding. Everybody loves tomato pudding. It's pudding by name, but not the creamy kind you're used to. Restaurant owner Betty Drake has been making tomato pudding all her life. See, there's a lazy version and then there's the real version. You get the whole tomatoes and you get boiling water and put them in there and you'll find out they'll start to peel. Others will use canned tomatoes. Then comes a dash of salt, some sugar, butter, sometimes cinnamon or nutmeg. For a little kick, Betty adds black pepper. And at my day, leftover biscuits, from the night before, they didn't waste any time. And then you do a little vanilla flavoring and cinnamon kind of to your taste and tomato pudding. <laughs> it's a Sunday staple at Betty's Restaurant in Allander, and it's on the buffet every day of the week at Windsor's Heritage House. 
if you don't like tomatoes, you still would like it because it's more, to me, it's sweet and it's more of a um, dessert, but it's a vegetable. It is a vegetable. And we have it on our vegetable side, but it is sweet. And it's, it's got cinnamon in it, so it's kind of hot. It has pepper, yeah. cinnamon and pepper. So it's, it's very flavorful. Long run, when you put that sugar and butter in those tomatoes, it becomes a dessert. You cannot put it on your buffet line and call it a vegetable. You can't put it and say it's a fruit. You're going to have to say it's a dessert. <laughs> okay, so there are differing opinions on how to classify it, but there's one thing most in Bertie County do agree on. Is it really a Bertie County thing? Definitely. It has been in my life forever, and I've been here a few years. Our best of 2019 People in Places special continues after the break. Why good food isn't the only thing on the menu at this Beaufort County institution. Welcome back to our best of 2019 People in Places special. Our last story is from a Beaufort County restaurant I visited twice this year. On my first stop, we focused on the people there and of course the food. Right now though, a look at what goes on outside the place that keeps people coming back. It's a place in Washington known for great food. Gosh, the best food in eastern North Carolina is just old country food. But there's something else that makes King Chicken stand out. Give me the king. I don't want to give you king. I know you don't want to, but what choice do you get? Each and every day, you'll see several people outside playing checkers. Checker is one of the most highly competitive sports that you can really get. Some of them posting up here for decades. I've been coming out here playing Chuck for about 40 or 45 years. This spot has always been available to us for just to have a nice gathering place, a place where you know you ain't got to worry about no riff raff or anything. A rite of passage for many. Coming out here and like to gather around and come out here and play Chuck for just simply for bragging rights. And all of them are basically my students. What? No, no, no. No. Did you just sit no. boy? No, you didn't sit no. boy. And as you'd imagine, there's plenty of smack talk. Talk a lot of junk now. You a, you a dead man walking, you gonna wish you hadn't done that. You might even think it's serious, but it's not serious out here. At least I haven't seen it get serious. The checkerboard, man, that's, a, that's an important part of King Chicken. We've got a, a list of those guys that have uh, played checkers out there. There's over 100 of them now. Uh, and that's a big part of King Chicken. I mean, they come here every day, they get coffee and play checkers. Most, uh, most from the time we open until uh, till the time we close at night, there's always somebody at the checkerboard. This man is a very good man. The one of the players, he is very nice to the people out here. He show that love, and that's what counts, that love. So it, it gives me encouragement to come out here every day. I go nowhere but here to meet these old guys here. Yeah. To see what can be on me, these old guys. Win or lose, the kings of King Chicken come back day after day, year after year. To me, it's very precious to have a bunch of guys your age, basically, that you can come around and socialize with and look, have a little fun, talk a little junk at the same time. But it's fun. It's, it's fun. You leave here when you go home, you're happy. Everybody, everybody wrong here. Ain't no problem wrong here. Just love. Two competitive spirits. When they get together, I don't care what it is. If they say I can beat you and you can say I'm a, I can beat you, hey man, let's go for it. And that's the game of Chuck. And those Checkers players are also the unofficial security force at King Chicken. The owner says the guys out front at the checkerboard likely deter any would-be criminals from stopping by. Don't forget you can head over to WNCT.com to rewatch all of the people and places I've featured throughout the year. Just click on People and Places under the On Your Side tab. Thank you so much for joining us on this look back at some of our favorite people and places of 2019. I'm Ken Watling. Have a great day.